a city of opportunity, a strategic location that can propel your business to the next level. Perfectly placed to access Asia and the world. Work with the leading thinkers in finance, retail, technology, and transport. Invest where the world's most prominent international brands are flourishing. Become part of an innovative hub with world-class intellectual property protection, where VC funds, university researchers, and tech companies meet to create breakthroughs. Invest in a place that nurtures businesses so they grow, with a competitive and simple tax regime and the world's freest economy. Investing here means having the vision to see the region as a whole, building connections between East and West, making deals flow even faster. Hong Kong remains the region's business center and is the gateway to and out of mainland China, joining people and cultures for a vibrant business community, a city where people are passionate about work and play, to enjoy music, sporting events, culture, and nightlife. Capture opportunities in a booming Bay Area of 11 cities that are getting more connected. Set up shop in a place where an entrepreneurial spirit abounds, where people embrace change and startups thrive. Live and work in a smart city, where fast data and cutting edge technology means everyday life just got easier. Launch and expand your business where smart also means safe, in one of the world's most secure cities. Invest where you can easily find the talent with the right backgrounds and skills. Invest Hong Kong is here for you to get you started and help you grow. Hong Kong, an unrivaled world-class city where business goes to grow. 2020 has been a challenging year for the world, but one country has already started its recovery, the Philippines. In response to COVID, production of PPE immediately accelerated to 60 million pieces a month, exemplifying our make it happen mindset. Business registrations are already 12% up on 2019. Approved investment in the first nine months of 2020 has been remarkable. And the economy is set to grow strongly in 2021. Annual exports from our aerospace industry are very healthy. Our automotive exports are even better. Annual revenues in IT and business outsourcing are higher than ever. Likewise, in our electronic sector. So what's behind this amazing bounce back? In a word, it's our people. A highly skilled and motivated workforce welcomes investors from the world over. And thousands of colleges and universities are adding to it every year. They're ready to rise to whatever challenges the future throws at us. Make it happen in the Philippines. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone to the webinar, Reconnect and Reinforce Hong Kong-Philippines Partnership. First of all, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Patricia Young, your host for today. Today's webinar is organized by the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau, Hong Kong SAR Government, and the Department of Trade and Industry, the Government of the Republic of the Philippines, Board of Investments, BOI, and the Philippine Trade and Investment Center, Hong Kong SAR. It is our privilege to have the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office and Invest Hong Kong co-organizing the event. Today's event is also supported by the following parties, which include Consulate General of the Philippines in Hong Kong, Federation of Hong Kong Industries, Hong Kong Trade Development Council, Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Semiconductors and Electronics Industries in the Philippines, and the IT Business Process Association of the Philippines. Before we get started, I would like to take a couple of minutes to remind our participants of the following points. First, 
The webinar will be conducted in English, and it will last for about one hour and fifteen minutes. During the webinar, the microphones and videos of the audience will be muted at all times. If you wish to ask questions, please submit them together with your email address by using the Q and A function. You may submit your questions anytime during the webinar. They will only be answered during the panel discussion session. However, since we may not be able to address all questions during the session, unanswered questions will be replied individually via email after the webinar. Please also be noted that the chat function will be disabled throughout the webinar. Now, I would like to introduce the agenda of today. We will start with the welcome and opening session by Mr. Edward Yao, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development of the Hong Kong SAR Government. This will then be followed by responding remarks by Mr. Ramon Lopez, the Secretary of Trade and Industry of the Government of the Philippines. Next, we will have a panel discussion titled "Emerging Stronger with Closer Collaboration and Partnership." Today, we're delighted to have leading figures from both Hong Kong and the Philippines across different industries in our panel, including the Department of Trade and Industry of the Government of the Philippines. Federation of Hong Kong Industries, ProPay Inc., the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Semiconductors and Electronics Industries in the Philippines, and the IT Business Process Association of the Philippines at our panel. During the panel discussion session, we'll open the floor to the audience for more Q and A's. Lastly, we'll invite Secretary Yao and Secretary Lopez to deliver the closing remarks. And now, may we have the honor to invite Mr. Edward Yao, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development of the Hong Kong SAR Government, to address our audience. Secretary Yao, please. Thank you. Good morning, um, Secretary Lopez, my dear friend, uh, distinguished speakers, friends from both uh, the Philippines and Hong Kong. My pleasure to uh, greet you here um, this morning. Um, with a very exciting sort of a, a webinar meeting between uh, the two sides of the, the ocean. Uh, I must stress that, well, I'm delighted to join this uh, forum to talk about Hong Kong and Philippine partnership because we are much closer than we thought. Uh, we, we all know that, well, Hong Kong and Philippines enjoy very cordial and close partnership arrangement and increasingly so because of the um, free trade agreement signed between Hong Kong and the uh, ASEAN countries. But people might have easily forgotten that actually back in November 2017, I went to Melilla and also have our sort of free trade agreement with ASEAN signed exactly uh, under the uh, Philippines chairmanship and guided by Secretary Lopez. So I'm, I'm glad to uh, use this a little reminder that we're actually uh, Hong Kong Philippines enjoy very close relations. And we look to the Philippines as one of the leaders within ASEAN to foster even closer relationship. Now, Hong Kong and the Philippines are close to each other, not just because of the uh, people to people, family, and also business connection. We are naturally a very close uh, complementary partners. Uh, the figures released only yesterday uh, about Hong Kong's uh, export to the world has in fact uh, picked up a historical record. Uh, in the last five months, we have exceeded each month uh, 800 billion Hong Kong dollar trade value, which is unprecedented. But I think the greatest growth of Hong Kong's export to the world is recorded between Hong Kong and the Philippines, which has, um, rec uh, which has achieved a 50% increase. And in fact, the other side, the Philippines uh, sees Hong Kong as the fourth largest trading partner Actually, together with mainland, we constitute more than a quarter of uh, the Philippines export, surpassing number two, US, and number, number three, Japan. So all these figures demonstrate the closeness between our uh, economy. But I would say the relationship between Hong Kong and the Philippines is ju not just strong, cordial, but also has a lot of potential to grow. But before we go into the sort of a, a actual business opportunity, which I believe uh, many, uh, succeeding speakers will, will uh, touch a point. I would like to bring us back to the global picture because both Hong Kong and the Philippines are at the center of the global trade because of geographical location, because of our common belief in free trade and also the robust uh, economies that we both share. But the global picture is not as sort of a uh, 
optimistic as one, of, one would have thought. Obviously, the whole world is facing three major challenges. One, of course, is the pandemic of COVID-19, which we are all suffering. And I think in, in, that, in facing that challenge, no single country, big or small, can be spared. It would only require a great deal of effort within the country to contain the disease, but also, more importantly, collaboration uh, around the world to fight this uh, global pandemic. And in that regard, I think Hong Kong will spare no effort in joining WHO and also working with our partners. On the one hand, containing the disease and at the same time, sort of bring back the economy. So I believe uh, that would also open up sort of opportunity in the business world for public health related or sort of a, a pandemic containment sort of related services and commodity trade. Now the second challenge that I think the whole world is facing is not natural, but man-made. It's in fact increasing protectionism for whatever reason, quite contrary to what the whole world have collectively achieved in bringing down trade barriers. We have seen only in the last couple of years a coming back of protectionism, be they sort of tariff-related barrier or non-tariff-related trade barriers. Now, this is not a good sign. But fortunately, I think we, we live in a part of the world within the uh, Asian Pacific region where we enjoy the common belief that, well, free trade is not just for economic prosperity, but also a solution to a lot of problems. So I, Hong Kong and, and I believe the Philippines will share this common value that, well, trade is in fact part of a solution both to global economic problems as well as global challenges like COVID-19. Now, the last challenge I would say is how to find a common ground to bring about positive, sustainable and inclusive growth within this region and to a wider global economy. Now, in that regard, I think, well, both Hong Kong and the Philippines can contribute a lot. On our side, Hong Kong together with the Greater Bay Area, which a lot of interest and attention are being focused on, is in fact providing a very big market for the world, as well as partnership for a lot of technology, services, and trade uh, collaboration. On the other hand, I think, well, ASEAN, including uh, the Philippines, is in fact the global, global, uh, global sort of trade engine uh, in the coming decades. I believe, well, by working together, by bringing GBA, the mainland, with ASEAN, will provide sufficient incentive and energy and momentum for allowing us to walk out of the economic doldrum that we are put under, both from COVID-19 and also protectionism. So with this opening remark, with this bigger picture that we, we commonly share, I believe well, there are a lot of things that we can talk about uh, using this uh, morning's forum. So I look forward to hearing more from the speakers and perhaps uh, picking up some questions that you may have And when I come back in the closing session. So thank you so much and over to you, Secretary Lopez. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary Yao. Now may we have the honor to invite Mr. Ramon Lopez, the Secretary of Trade and Industry of the Government of the Philippines to deliver his remarks. Secretary Lopez, please. Thank you very much. Um, of course, hello to my dear friend, uh, Secretary Edward Yao of the uh, Minister of Commerce and Economic Development. I'd like to acknowledge also the presence of our Undersecretary, uh, Secretary Rodolfo of the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Mr. Stephen Phillips, of uh, Director General of Investment Promotion Invest Hong Kong, Mr. Steve Chuang, Deputy Chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Industries, Precious Valerie Silva, Co-Founder and Chief Strategy Officer of Pearl Pay, uh, Mr. Jess Varela, our partner from the International Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Dan Lechica, the President of Semiconductors and Electronics Industries in the Philippines, and Attorney Ricky Salvador, Executive Director for the External Affairs and Investor Relation of the IT Business Process Association of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, a good day to all Filipinos and the citizens of Hong Kong and foreign businessmen who have joined us today. Thank you to the Hong Kong government, especially our good friend, Secretary Edward Yao and his team for organizing this webinar for us. As the Philippines builds back better from the pandemic, we hope to strengthen trade and investment ties with other countries and regions especially under our Make It Happen in the Philippines investment promotion brand. Hong Kong is one of those regions that the Philippines has a very close relationship with, given President Rodrigo Roa Duterte's independent foreign policy that led to stronger ties between Philippines and China in the past few years. Hong Kong is the nearest major international and global trading center for Manila, 
just about an hour and a half by plane and sea trade routes are one of the busiest for Manila. As mentioned by Secretary Yao, Hong Kong is our fourth largest trading partner, our fourth biggest export market, our 11th import supplier and our 16th investment source in 2020. And if you combine that with China, yes, they, you would, they will all be the first or number one in terms of ranking. Our trading and investment partner companies in Hong Kong can surely ride on the Philippines' expected recovery this year. We believe that the continued gradual and calibrated reopening of the Philippine economy together with the country's rollout of vaccination is keeping us on track towards a V-shaped recovery. We are already seeing some signs of recovery with respect to our GDP growth, the record investment and export growth rates that, that, that hit also about 72% growth last April, even higher than the 2019 pre-pandemic levels. The net foreign direct investments, manufacturing capacity performance, and lowering unemployment rates, among others. Our only concern in our recovery efforts are the new variants of COVID, like the Delta variant and now even the Delta Plus variant, similar to what hit other countries. And so we are adopting a calibrated and safe reopening, but one that leans toward more economic activities without risking potential recurrence of surge of COVID cases. It is really a delicate balance that we have to keep. But we have also observed that any effort to reopen our economy, no matter how small, quickly translates into economic gains. Thanks to our country's robust economic fundamentals. After all, before the pandemic, we were growing at an average of 6.6% .6 from 2016 to 2019, and even became the uh, third fastest growing economy in Asia. This is because our economy's resilience can be attributed to one of our key advantages, our people. We still can count on our 110 million population that continues to grow, that has a demographic sweet spot and an average young age of 25 years old. And that means more productive years ahead of them, providing also a rich pool of 49 million manpower resource needed for growth, as well as a continuously growing consumer base with increasing income and purchasing power. Additionally, our country produces over 700,000 graduates yearly, and thanks to a learning culture that is multilingual, multicultural, and with a high resource power. These 49 million manpower are highly skilled, highly technical, educated, dedicated, and cost-efficient workforce with very low attrition rate. Our people are well known across the world as highly capable, hardworking, highly trainable, fluent in English, and with cost-competitive talent. They also have a persevering attitude, even as part of a corporate, corporate culture. They can think global and act local. Meanwhile, the Philippines has preferential access in major markets through the FTAs, the, including the EU's uh, Generalized Scheme of Preferences Plus, or what we call GSP Plus, and also the US GSP, which is under discussion for renewal but we hope to strengthen our relationship with the U.S. beyond the GSP and graduate towards an FTA. Furthermore, the Philippines is part of the RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, which is intended to create in the region a more business-friendly, rules-based, predictable business environment. And just to add, we've officially submitted our interest to join the CPTPP, which would expand the Philippines' trade ties that will create more opportunities to enhance competitiveness and market access for companies in the country. As we are fighting the pandemic, the Philippines stayed the course in terms of implementing major economic reforms to make the Philippines more conducive for companies to conduct and continue business operations. One is the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprises, uh, we, which we call CREATE Act, which is a game-changing legislation that will make investment climate in the Philippines significantly more attractive. Another is the continued rollout of the government's massive build, build, build infrastructure program, which has prioritized key projects amounting to about 8 to 9 trillion pesos or around 188 billion US dollars for 2016 to 2022 over the six-year leadership of President Duterte. This has brought investments in infrastructures to record levels, accounting for around 7% of GDP which grew from a typical level of 2% in the past administrations. These are ready for implementation and responsive 
to the country's post-pandemic needs for major economic infrastructures. Moreover, before the pandemic, we started to implement more streamlining and digitalization in government services as part of the ease of doing business program. These are just a few of the many reasons why Philippines is an ideal complement to Hong Kong businesses that plan to expand their R&D activities, manufacturing activities, and IT and business process management activities. Just to note, we have a lot of companies with Hong Kong equity doing business in the Philippines. Recently, the toy manufacturer Bandai Namco, electronics manufacturer Delton Totoko, Philippines, and on uh, semiconductor Cebu, Philippines. Others include Christian Dior, Hewlett Packard, HLA Garments, DW Morgan, just to name a few. We'd also like to point out that Philippines can be a strategic hub in the Asia Pacific for hyperscalers. We would like to invite you to look at the Philippines to either co-locate or put up data centers here, leveraging on our large population and propensity to consume data, foreign content, and cloud services. We also have the necessary infrastructure as well as the regulatory environment to attract hyperscalers. Meanwhile, while the, Gong, the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area as a key driver of mainland uh, China's development, Hong Kong is a great platform for Filipino companies and Filipinos in the service sector to connect with companies in the area and around the world. Further, due to Hong Kong's experience, uh, extensive experience, working with foreign investors, you are a perfect launch pad for the Belt and Road Initiatives in the Philippines. Before we end, we'd like to assure you that the Department of Trade and Industry of the Philippines through the Board of Investment and the Philippine Trade and Investment Center based in Hong Kong are here to assist you and facilitate your business interest. The Philippines is ready to be a valuable contributor to your global business growth and as a partner in global rebuilding after the pandemic. Thank you very much. Mabuhay po tayong lahat and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you very much, Secretary Lopez. Now we'll move on to the panel discussion. We're honored to have six panelists from both Hong Kong and the Philippines. They're our top industry leaders with expertise on a wide range of areas in business experience in Hong Kong, the Philippines, and beyond. It is with regret that Ambassador Francis Chow would not be able to join this webinar this morning due to urgent issue. It is our honor to have Mr. Jesus Varela, Director General, International Chamber of Commerce, Philippines, joining us today. Now at this juncture, I would like to introduce our moderator, Mr. Stephen Phillips, the Director General of Investment Promotion of the Invest Hong Kong of the Hong Kong SAR government. Mr. Phillips and our expert panelists will share their insights under the theme of Emerging Stronger with Closer Collaboration and Partnership. And now I'll pass the floor to our moderator, Mr. Phillips. Well, Patricia, thank you very much indeed. And good morning, everybody. Um, it really is a pleasure for me to be moderating this session. Um, as Patricia said, I'm joined by six real experts in their field from both Hong Kong and the Philippines. And they're going to be sharing with us their personal insights into how companies from both destinations can find new opportunities. Perhaps I could start by briefly introducing our panelists. Uh, first of all, we have Dr. Seferino Rodolfo, Under Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry and Managing Head of the Board of Investments. Um, with me here in Hong Kong, we have Dr. Um, Steve Chuang, Deputy Chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Industries. Um, also joining us online, we have Precious Valerie Silva, co-founder and chief strategy officer of Pearl Pay Inc. <laughs> Um, we also have Dr. Jesus Varela, Director General of the International Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, um, Dr. Danilo Lachica, President of the Semiconductors and Electronics Industries of the Philippines, and last but not least, Attorney Ricky Salvador, Executive Director for External Affairs at the IT Business Process Association of the Philippines. Um, over the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to be building upon the comments from Secretary Yao and Secretary Lopez and really getting the insights from our expert panel. And I'm sure we're going to touch on a lot of the issues that both secretaries um, set out for us. Really our experiences in this COVID world and where the new opportunities might lie 
in the future. How we can take steps to reinforce the already good partnership between Hong Kong and the Philippines. And perhaps we can also touch on how Hong Kong can play a role as one of the world's leading international financial centers to help Filipino companies raise capital and finance projects in the Philippines. And um, Secretary Lopez mentioned the infrastructure plans in the Philippines, build, 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 I think he said. Um, and perhaps Hong Kong could be a venue for some capital raising there. And then really, we want to also explore how Hong Kong companies can leverage the Philippines as a manufacturing base, as a hub for R&D, and also support services within ASEAN. And again, I hope we can also touch on those infrastructure opportunities. Um, I've already received a number of questions from um, the audience, and we're going to attempt to address those during our discussions. Um, I'll also, if I may, um, pose a couple of questions to Secretary Yao at the end. Um, but before we kick off, I'd also just like to remind my fellow panelists that if you'd like to chip in on the answers of other panelists, please do so. But to kick off, perhaps we could start with Dr. Rodolfo. Um, Secretary Lopez mentioned the CREATE Act, which came into force in March this year. And perhaps you could explain in a little bit more detail how this is relevant to international investors and investors from Hong Kong to help them, to entice them to invest in your country. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, before I directly answer the question about CREATE, let me just spend one minute to discuss the context also between of the relevance of CREATE to Philippines-Hong Kong uh, economic relations. First of all, good morning to my boss, Secretary Mon Lopez, and to our good friend from the Philippines, Minister Edward. Uh, Minister Edward mentioned about the Philippines prioritizing during our ASEAN hosting the signing of the ASEAN-Hong Kong FTA. Indeed, this was a personal advocacy of Secretary Mon Lopez during our hosting, if only to really cement and to, to show to the world about the complementarity, as was mentioned by uh, Minister Yao. Now, and on another matter, also regarding the strong uh, relationship between ASEAN and uh, Philippines and Hong Kong. Secretary Mon Lopez wrote a letter to Hong Kong uh, proposing the immediate signing of a memorandum of understanding towards a joint economic commission that would be discussing investments, financial services. Uh, uh, the Greater Bay Area. This letter was sent last December 2019 by MOU on JEC for close their collaboration by March of 2020. We hope to be able to pick up on that uh, very soon. I'm mentioning this because, you, because in relation to our overall relationship between Hong Kong, it's not only the Greater Bay Area that we are closely looking at now, but also in particular, particular the dual circulation economy of China. Hong Kong will play a big part of within this dual circulation economy of China and the greater Bay Area because Hong Kong is the tip of all of this, your entry point essentially to all of these things that are happening. While at the same time for the Philippine side, we are at the tip of the ASEAN. We are the closest points among all of these very important things that are happening within our two, two, two sides of where we are. And in relation to that, we also know that Hong Kong is, has been a driver of investments in China ever since. If you look at, we look at the investments data in China between 1979 to 2018, of course, largely driven by Hong Kong, Chinese, Taipei, US, Korea, Japan, Germany, but very high up there is Hong Kong, in particular in financial services in real estate and also innovation driven services. Within this context, we know that our CREATE law that was recently signed last March would be very important to make the Philippines more attractive. Number one, it reduced the corporate income tax in the Philippines for everyone, regardless of where 
whether you you re register in a particular investment promotion agency or just a regular business, uh, corporate income tax has dropped from 30% to 25% immediately. And second, if you are going to register your project because it is a uh, it is a uh, it is, it is uh, allowed to be part of a strategic investment priorities plan, you will enjoy income tax holiday of between four to seven years, depending on how far you are from the national capital region because we want to push development to other areas and depending on the level of innovation and technology. And this is also innovation-driven manufacturing. And now, if you are going tax holiday, will be followed by, I, by a, either it's at your choice of 5% tax on gross income earned. So instead of the 25% corporate income tax, you will be allowed to choose either would, would you want for the next 10 years after your four to seven years of income tax holiday, enjoy a 5% tax on gross income earned or go to a regime of what we call enhanced deductions. When we, call, when we say enhanced deductions, this will be 10 years where you will be allowed additional deductions for key cost items. For example, 50% additional deduction on power uh, against your taxable income. On labor, additional 50% deduction. On R&D and training, it's even higher. It's double the deduction. And also very important, local sourcing. For every one peso that you source locally, you will be allowed to deduct an additional 50 centavos for every locally sourced uh, input. That is very important because we know that as Hong Kong has driven the development not just in China, but also in the region, in Asia and ASEAN, you could also look at the Philippines as a complementary location for your cluster of investments, for example, in garments and textile. So you get to enjoy all of the ITH and in between you, your purchases from the other other. Uh, uh, other firms that are part of your cluster, that additional 50% uh, deduction. And by the way, we have also relaxed our rules in terms of being relocated from somewhere else in ASEAN. Where there is, for example, some... Uh, uh, political instability within that ASEAN country. You can relocate your cluster to the Philippines using second to whet the appetite of our Hong Kong businessmen on opportunities in the Philippines with the CREATE bill. Thank you. Great lot. Thank you. Great. Dr. Adolfo, thank you very much. Obviously, the CREATE Act um, provides many incentives, but um, a question from the audience is, why should a company from Hong Kong look at the Philippines as opposed to one of the other ASEAN economies? Perhaps you could highlight just two or three things um, beyond CREATE um, that you would say are really special about the Philippines. Okay. Yes, very important would be, as Secretary Mon Lopez mentioned, our labor. When, wherever you go, all investors that you talk to, they highlight the high quality of our workers. Uh, just to cite an example, there was a UK-based company, a UK-owned company that was based in Singapore that has a production facility in a, one of the ASEAN countries, very popular ASEAN country. But... They have this particular ASEAN country has already lost its GSP status to a particular market. So initially, they requested us to apply for GSP plus in this particular market. So you already know what market that is. And we, we did so. And, and as a result of that, they started first with just one line, one production line for a particular item. But what, but what they have seen is that our uh, human resource, our graduates, very young graduates, you could typically see in our shop floor, engineers of uh, 23, 24 years old, very young, very dynamic, highly adaptable. 
Because of this, they have expanded to now have eight product, product lines in, in the Philippines. But in addition to that, they have also now put in here their R&D software center. But in addition to that, we are also already in discussion because they have seen the advantages also of our CREATE Act for a full-blown R&D center in the Philippines. So it's a mix of the uh, access that we have to markets and in addition also the uh, very good uh, human resource. When I say very good human resource, I also refer to labor turnover rate that is very low compared with the, this in, those, those in our region and wage rates that, that are stable. Great. Well, thank you. And perhaps I could now turn to Steve here in Hong Kong. Steve, your own business has invested in the Philippines in manufacturing and working with the Federation. Perhaps you could share some insights as to how you see Hong Kong investors um, setting up operations in the Philippines, um, what works well, what has attracted them, and perhaps any issues that they face in the process. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. So good morning, everyone. So first of all, let's look at the Federation of Hong Kong Industries members. So we have roughly about 2,000 members. 90% of members have the manufacturing operation in Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay areas. Recently, many of our members are looking for expanding manufacturing facility in Asian country or the rest of the world. So I think one of the major concern for our members are the conflicts between China and US trade, and also some potential issues from certain countries. Okay, so uh, last year we did a survey, so we have 230 manufacturing, manufacturing company responds to us. And the results shows us 23% of the Hong Kong companies are either running the manufacturing sites outside China, say in uh, Asian countries. And on the other hand, they are keeping the operation in Hong Kong as a headquarter and GBA as the manufacturing management and part of the manufacturing as well. So you can see the relationship, the triangle relationship, Hong Kong as a headquarter, China, GBA as the manufacturing management and also production center in Asian countries as well. So when we ask our members, what are your major considerations when you are going to move to set up the second operations in Asian countries? So basically what we are doing is called China plus one. So with the China as one of the base plus one in Asian countries. So there are a couple of factors for there to consider. First of all, so uh, our member will consider the tariff to the export countries, okay? The human resources, the logistic service, the financial service, and easy to do business. And of course, the public safety and stability of societies are also important. So look at my company. In end of 2019, I went to Manila and I look at the, the pizza's operation that is Philippines Economic Songs Authorities. They had run a couple of uh, uh, industrial parts across the countries. So I found out it is really good because it is pretty easy to do business. Uh, we can get the human resources easily. And one thing is very special in Philippines, 
the engineering resources supply are really good. And of course, as everybody know, the communication is a very strong point because everybody are using English to communicate. So my company, for example, I start with about 500 workers, electronic manufacturing company, and my major market is to USA. So right now the Philippines operation accounts for 5% of my company's operations. So we also found out that 60% of the Philippines exports are electronic industries. So among these exports, 75% are semiconductor and the semiconductor related, related business. So you can see that for electronic business, Philippines is a mature area for to do business. And it is good, they have certain supply chain, which is very good for uh, electronic manufacturing company, okay? So uh, basically, uh, what we are doing is, for our company, we are doing the upstream research and development in Hong Kong. We work with the world-class university in Hong Kong. We work with the R&D center in Hong Kong. We have uh, five top R&D center in Hong Kong that help us to do the high-end research in technology. On the other hand, we are commercializing this technology, this new technology, typically in GBA, to turn it into the product, to turn it to a prototype which can be put into the production line. Then depends on the market we are going to export. So we will put it in Dongguan or we will put it in the Manila. So you can see that is a perfect system for us. So we can see the partnership between Hong Kong and the Philippines. They are very tight and they are, you know, can support each other in the different aspects. Steve, can I pick up on that point? Yes. So obviously your own business operations in the Philippines and GBA. Yes. But in general, do you see opportunities for Hong Kong and Filipino companies to genuinely collaborate together in the GBA? It's obviously a region of tremendous opportunity. Uh, and if so, how would you suggest companies go about it? Uh, yes. Uh, as I say, 90% of the Hong Kong manufacturing company, they have the operation in GBA. And traditionally, this exporting company, they focus a lot on Europe and USA. So uh, because the conflict between China and US, I think it is a, a big advantage for Hong Kong company to set up the manufacturing outside the GBA. On the other hand, is Hong Kong is a very easy, very convenient location to do business. We provide the top world-class financial service and logistic, logistic service. For example, if the Filipino company want to do the business in GBA, it is very easy for them to come to Hong Kong to set up the branch operation and they can meet, make use of resources and uh, uh, human resources expertise in Hong Kong and go into the GBA. So Hong Kong is a 7 million population city. However, our GBA is 72 million population. That is uh, and the gateway to go to further to 1.4 billion of population's uh, market. So that is very attractive. So basically, uh, last year, we did a survey so amongst our members and 74% of our members say, because of the pandemic, the business with USA and Europe are actually going down because uh, uh, the business is uh, uh, because of lockdowns, all kinds of factors. On the other hand, our members say 
Only 42% say the business in China are being affected. So you can see the resilience of the Chinese market and how important the Hong Kong can make use of China market and the export market to well plan your overall business. Great. Well, maybe in summary, come and talk to Invest Hong Kong and to the members of the Federation um, if you're a Filipino company looking to enter GDA. Perhaps we could turn to a, a completely different sector now and pressures. Um, Hong Kong was one of the first markets that Pearl Pay um, entered outside the Philippines. Perhaps you could give us some insights as to why you chose Hong Kong, um, what you found about the process of setting up here, and any advice that you've got for other um, early stage and tech-led companies in the Philippines. So, uh, you know, no. okay. sorry, but that was for precious. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was on mute earlier. Um, the decision for our company to set up in Hong Kong was really, um, like what we did in the Philippines, we wanted to go on the ground. Um, where the business model that we have right, uh, right now is actually um, going to expand to overseas Filipino workers, etc. And then, um, Hong Kong was a strategic location at that time as well. And then when we went there, um, we actually was able to affirm our business model and see opportunities to service our stakeholders. In the same way, um, Hong Kong has been a top financial center. So everything that we need to learn in terms of going global and in terms of um, financial services, expanding, etc., it's in the country. So regardless of the timing, regardless of the timing at that time, Time. And then up until now, we see uh, it as a strategic location for us. Um, there are more than also 200,000 Filipinos in Hong Kong. So um, that fits perfectly with what we want to do and what we are continuing do, doing right now. Sorry, I think my audio is a little bit um, low. Um, can you hear me properly? We, we can hear you. It breaks up a little bit. Okay. Please carry on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, can you repeat the other questions that we have? Um, well, th there's another question actually from the audience, Precious. Um, from your knowledge of the startup ecosystem in Hong Kong, um, and obviously your knowledge of the um, startup ecosystem in the Philippines, where, where do you see the angles for collaboration there? Um, the angles for collaboration actually stemmed from our own experience when we attended conferences in Hong Kong organized by Good City Foundation and Future City Summit. So there was this dialogue and um, it's a week-long um, engagement wherein leaders from both sides, even public officials from the Philippines a year before at that time, and then um, government uh, representatives from Hong Kong also participated. So uh, the opportunity is that we could look into how um, Singapore plug and play did it in Singapore. We did, we did create a global innovation alliance. So there's this sort of venue for companies to exchange information, ideas, etc. So you, um, I think we need to support it more. Although I know Invest HQ, Invest HQ is now sponsoring also a Future City Summit. So I, we've been participating in that. It was a good venue for us to cross-pollinate ideas. So, intentionally or unintentionally we were able to get um mentors and partners and eventually um it, it has allowed us to see where we need to scale how we should tweak our model and in the same way um for the hong kong companies that we have talked to they were able to look into or reflect into their own approaches to see where they could improve on or what markets they could still um explore so and in another way, um, I think it could also, uh, the venue could also be looking into digital banking, um, looking into existing use cases and best practices. In the Philippines, it's still not quite mature. So there is a lot of opportunity for us to learn. And in the same way in the Philippines for the digital financial inclusion, the market is quite big. So I think Secretary Lopez um, earlier mentioned, we are a 110 million population. So you could just imagine the opportunity if you tap into that. and if you could um, really encourage that, um, that digitalization in the country and in the same way that OSWs and the profile of OSWs is not alone in Hong Kong, there are other similar um, 
global uh, participants in Hong Kong with the same profile. So maybe that could also be a use case. So uh, I would also like to add for the GBA initiative, um, it includes several cities, right? So that's an opportunity for many tech companies and communities to transform the communities and both governments could be a good sponsor of the cross-pollination of the ideas. So yeah, I think that's where we could look into in terms of collaboration between the two countries, especially in the startup and the financial services sector. Great. Well, Precious, thank you very much indeed. Um, Mr. Rayla, maybe we can move on to you. Um, there's a, a saying that in every crisis, there's an opportunity. Um, in your role, obviously, you've got a very good understanding of the breadth of the Filipino business community. Um, where do you see the opportunities for Filipino companies outside the country? What, what do you see as the bright spots? And how do you think Filipino companies should position themselves to capture these opportunities, including, of course, right here in Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area? Well, good morning to all. You know, in the midst of crisis lies uh, great opportunities. Uh, this is a quote uh, attributed to Albert Einstein, which uh, uh, it very well could be uh, the guiding light of too many Filipinos. You know, the digital sphere was a topic much talked about, but few treaded on. The road to digi digitalization would have taken another five or more years, but COVID-19 accelerated the necessary pivot for Filipinos to survive. Uh, the sale of smartphones, Laptops and computers was never so brisk, you know, in the first months of the pandemic. And uh, in the period of April to May, uh, there were about at least 200,000 new websites and platforms created. And suddenly social media was inundated with all kinds of goods to sell and services to offer. But by and large, you know, the winners were in the healthcare and pharmaceuticals, uh, the industry that uh, was in the front line in the battle versus COVID. And uh, the uncertainty of when the lockdowns will end has benefited the food manufacturers. You know, uh, one beneficiary was the uh, Century Pacific Food, which grew its third quarter net profit by 15% year on year to 1.06 billion. The Gokong Way led University, Universal Robina Farms grew its nine month net period by 7.2% year on year to 7.5 billion pesos. Sales of domestic and international branded consumer foods reached 77.4 billion for the first nine months, of which domestic revenues accounted for 46.5 billion. So there were, uh, well, we talk about food manufacturing and the Groceries, you know, were were likewise uh, bullish in the sense that uh, most of the, the the malls have been locked down. So groceries and 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 uh, the supermarkets were allowed to operate to operate, and the index representative is a pure gold price club whose net profit rose by ten point nine percent year on year to 5.05 billion. Emerging tycoon in Japsia successfully brought his family's new grocery business under Merrimark company to brave the stock market, you know, during the challenging year and was amply rewarded. When he started this IPO at one peso, it is now trading more than six times higher. Of course, other winners are the tel Telephone, telecommunications and broadband service in view of the work from home arrangement and uh, which service household or businesses, whether for entertainment, education, or professional use. Uh, on the investments, uh, I just signed, uh, just uh, prior the pandemic, I signed a memorandum of understanding with the owner of uh, the Palms Hotel in Istanbul and Cappadocia, and he's setting up a, a five-star hotel in between a golf course and, and, and a uh, resort in, in Rizal, uh, that's east of Metro Manila. Uh, 
uh, I was surprised to be invited in a in a Zoom meeting with uh, Med Invest. Med Invest is the uh, manufacturer of the Russian vaccines, together with the, the head of the RDIF, the Russian Development Investment Fund, uh, who were interested in setting up a laboratory in the Philippines. So we assisted them and guided them, but asked them also not to get the, the uh, endorsement from WHO. But they looked at the Philippines precisely because of the geographic uh, location, where it, it could serve as a hub to ASEAN. And uh, likewise, I have just endorsed recently uh, the interest of another foreign group you now to set up uh, uh, oil depot and a port uh, somewhere in the economic zone of uh, the province of Tawi Tawi. So you see, there are much interest, especially now, uh, as our good secretary mentioned, the passing of create bill can now give more attraction to investors uh, looking at looking at the Philippines. But uh, you know, the pandemic will stay with us for a couple more years. And uh, I believe we should learn how to safely live with the virus, you know, by getting ourselves vaccinated. But, you know, there is a need for both Hong Kong and, and, and the Philippine government to collaborate. Probably initially, we could look at the possibility of the vaccine passports. You know, it is so difficult, you know, uh, to, to, to do business by Zoom, probably it's something new, you know, but it's different when you have a face-to-face -face with your probable partners. As a matter of fact, I set up an office in Hong Kong in 2019 in central Hong Kong, Crawford House. I had to shut it down or I'll lose my pants paying the rent of the utilities. You know? uh, and, and it's so difficult to meet with my, my business friends in Hong Kong if I have to stay for 21 days. But if we have certain collaboration, just like in the vaccine passports, you know, uh, that will be agreed upon by the two governments, then we can probably ease the quarantine restrictions and could uh, allow more businessmen uh, greater mobility. Thank you. Well, Mr. Varela, thank you very much for that. I'm sure uh, many business people would agree um, on, on the challenges that um, travel restrictions have, and perhaps Secretary Yang might comment on that um, towards the end of the session. Um, but also, thank you for sharing those very broad opportunities. And um, perhaps now I could turn to Dr. La Chica. Um, in, in your role working with the semiconductor and electronics industries, in the Philippines um, and against this trend of massive technology adoption really fueled by the pandemic. Where, where do you see the angles for cooperation between um, your members and, and companies in Hong Kong and broader GBA um, into the future, please? Um, well, thank you for that question. Good morning, everyone. And uh, maybe I can just give you a quick background. The Philippine electronics industry accounts for about $40 billion or 62% of our annual Philippine commodity exports and over 3 million direct and indirect workers. 8 billion or 19% of our electronics products are exported to Hong Kong. Now, if we count China, this number goes up $13 billion or 32% of our uh, country's electronics exports. These numbers have actually dropped from the 43.3 billion pre-COVID numbers, but thanks to the untiring help of Secretary Lopez, Secretary Perry Rodolfo, and our Department of Trade and Industry and its attached agency, the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, which Stephen mentioned, uh, which is under the leadership of Director General Charito Plaza, we are on the road to recovery. In fact, we are projecting a 7% growth for 2021. From an industry association perspective, uh, SAPI has been working with the Hong Kong Electronics Industry Association. I have worked with the Chairman C.H. Ng and the CEO Basil Y in venues and matters of common interest, including uh, activities in the World Electronics Forum and the Asia Electronics Forum. Uh, moving forward, we hope to further strengthen our partnership 
to grow our respective industries, to your point. Uh, Stephen mentioned the need for R&D. Uh, well, thanks again to Secretary Lopez, uh, DTI funded our industry roadmap, which identifies new products in emerging technologies for the Philippines, as well as the setup of a science and technology center to foster R&D in partnership with uh, Secretary de la Peña and the Department of Science and Technologies. So those are potential areas of collaboration in terms of obviously uh, uh, partnering with the industry associations to set up B2B meetings. And in fact, uh, I, I remember, I think Stephen came over to uh, kind of take a, a assessment of the lay of the land so we can introduce him to uh, local companies and investors and we can do the same thing also for Philippine companies who are willing to invest in Hong Kong. But uh, I, I think there's a big opportunity for us to just kind of delve and uh, strengthen our relationship, both uh, from the electronics industry perspective, uh, as well as a country uh, trade perspective. Thank you. Well, Dr. Lachika, thank you very much indeed. Um, we're fast running out of time, so I'd like to move on to Ricky now. Um, Ricky, um, from your uh, position, uh, looking at sort of business processing, um, in the Philippines. Where, where do you see the angles of collaboration um, between the Philippines and Hong Kong? And again, the pandemic obviously changing the shape of how companies perhaps do remote working, remote processing and so forth. Thank you, Stephen. So for the IT Business Process Association, um, we are fortunate to have been able to operate during the pandemic and see the growth of certain subsectors, such as the health information management subsector, the games development, and even the um, animation industry. So these are all our subsectors. And uh, we saw pretty good growth in a time when other industries were not faring quite well. So in terms of collaboration, I've been in meetings uh, with our foreign uh, trade service officers uh, based in Hong Kong. And uh, they mentioned to me that um, some companies were looking at the Philippines for their business process outsourcing, outsourcing needs. So yes, uh, we're, we're fully operational now and uh, we're providing a very efficient, uh, very competitive uh, business process outsourcing services, not just to Hong Kong, but to the rest of the um, the rest of the region and the world. Thank you. Uh, and do you see the impact of the pandemic changing the dynamics of your sector? Right. We actually are uh, looking at 5.5% growth in the next two years in our sector. So this is going to be aided by accelerated uh, digitalization and um, more competitive uh, advantages uh, coming in for the Philippines. Uh, in terms of talent, uh, I saw a question earlier in the chat box asking about um, engineering uh, and uh, technology graduates. We churned out uh, about 87,000 uh, new engineering graduates in the Philippines and probably the same number uh, in terms of IT uh, and technology-based graduates. So we have a pretty robust pipeline and funnel that will um, enable us to um, power through uh, and provide the services that the globe needs. Okay, that's great. Um, I, I'm afraid we really are running out of time now. And um, there are a number of questions that we haven't been able to address. Um, some of them relate to other opportunities in creative industries, in academic collaboration. And we even have a question whether and there's opportunities for collaboration between Hong Kong, the Philippines and Indonesia. And to all of them, I would say, yes, great opportunities. And we'll get back to you directly on those. Um, the Secretary Yao, um, perhaps during your wrap up, um, there's been quite a number of questions about travel restrictions uh, and how you anticipate that things might change in due course. Um, so if you could share some thoughts on that. But really, it's up to me now just to wrap up this session. I'm sure you would all join me in thanking our panelists. I think we've had some tremendous insights from each of them. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, all I would say is this is just the start. 
Um, if I and my colleagues at Invest Hong Kong can help, please get in touch at any time. Uh, and certainly you can find me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message and I'll put you in touch with the right people. So thank you very much. And thank you to Steve here in Hong Kong and all of our panelists online. Thank you. Thank you once again for our panelists for sharing your insights and thank you, Mr. Phillips, for moderating the session for us. Also, thank you very much for everyone's active participation in the Q&A session. As we mentioned, we'll have your questions answered separately and you'll receive your responses via email. Before the event draws to an end, we would like to invite Secretary Yao and Secretary Lopez to close the webinar with a few words. Secretary Yao, please. Thank you. Well, uh, that's been very enlightening to hear the, the panel focusing on quite a wide range of subjects. Perhaps uh, uh, before addressing the question that Stephen posed to me uh, uh, from the audience, to summarize, uh, perhaps two major points. One, you can all hear that, well, actually, the relationship and partnership between Hong Kong and the Philippines does not start from scratch. Actually, there is very wide and deep sort of a, a partnership uh, existing, running well, from the manufacturing base we talked about to the mutual investment, and also sort of a lot of discussion on what additional opportunity that we will be opening to us. So that's a very important point that we should not lose sight that, well, there are already very strong uh, strength uh, underpinning this relationship, which is hard earned. And I think that is also, that puts also, for instance, the Philippines. Um, on top of many sort of your counterparts within ASEAN, you are in fact our top five, uh, within the top five of um, uh, in terms of trading relationship within the 10 countries within ASEAN. So let's ride on that solid foundation that we have built over the years. So that's my point number one. And I think the, the uh, sources of strength are coming from uh, not confining to the speakers that you, you have heard, and also the trade association that we have both sides established, but they are the resource persons. They are the, the, the sort of a contact point uh, from whom we can pick up the experience and build on it. That's my first point. Now, the second point is, I think, uh, as we, we try to sort of articulate on this relationship, we are talking about modern day supply chain, which focus not just on bilateral trading relations or not confining to just chain commodities, but a supply chain that will be moving from manufacturing, advanced manufacturing to surface side, including sort of a, a surface design to, for instance, financing of major investment. Now, this is what is happening in um, the world and, and where Hong Kong sees ourselves playing a role. I think the very reason of over 9,000 company keep on sort of retaining and also coming to Hong Kong, using us as regional headquarters, regional office, or regional base. It's not just focusing on this 7.5 million population in Hong Kong or the small market within the, the city. It, is, it must be eyeing on the connection where Hong Kong can play, not just to the mainland, but also to ASEAN, and also in this uh, Asian Pacific region to the wider global uh, sort of a trading community. Now, the reason is very simple. Hong Kong does not pick our winners. It's in fact winners who pick Hong Kong because of the advantage that they can leverage on. Now, one thing that Hong Kong can assure everybody is the level playing field, open and competitive trading environment, and also the rule of law, which a business community treasures so much. Now, these are the important pillars that will continue to support Hong Kong. But more importantly, riding on that in a modern supply chain uh, sort of environment, services is utmost important, high quality professional services, and also sort of a, from design from, from cradle uh, uh, to, to grave, a, a comprehensive uh, sort of a, a link uh, involving all parties are essential. And I believe uh, Hong Kong and the Philippines have this advantage to be our mutual space station, so to speak in our journey to the wider sort of uh, universe. Uh, we have already gone through the, the, the um, stage of launching pad where we both have in fact made initial voyage uh, in this part of the region. But more importantly is to support each other in playing the role of space station or the network of communication to allow people, capital and information, and more importantly, the whole digital and uh, 
um, and technology and innovation sort of a community to take full advantage of this modern supply chain. So I believe uh, all these are important. Then I will come to the, my last point that at the moment, I think uh, traveling between Hong Kong and the Philippines are encountering some difficulties, largely because uh, we have a, a system where uh, once we have detected um, a certain sort of number of uh, imported cases from a single place and also taking into account of the epidemic situation there, we might impose uh, different restrictions. At the moment, I think we are not able to allow free uh, sort of uh, uh, visiting from the Philippines. Uh, uh, so this, uh, unfortunately, uh, will hinder some of the person-to-person -person sort of contact. But it also highlights the importance of the webinar like today, where we can still sort of uh, talk to each other uh, through the modern communication. And on the other hand, uh, trading commodity doesn't seem to be affected at all. I mentioned about the 50% increase in, uh, in trade between Hong Kong and Philippines in only in the last uh, five months. But the, the Hong Kong strategy in that regard is science-based, public health-based. We are very hopeful that, well, uh, eventually the border will, will be reopened, not just between Hong Kong and the mainland, but also to the wider world. Um, the, I, would, I would sort of foretell that, well, in the, in the days to come, the Hong Kong strategy will be getting our own people fully vaccinated to those age, 14 days, as a prerequisite for going out. You have heard Hong Kong establishing some air travel bubble with neighboring countries, starting with Singapore. I think that will become a prerequisite. And secondly, I think the mutual sort of uh, on the ground testing, both pre-boarding and also upon arrival, would become the necessary process that we need to go through. But more importantly, I think is uh, the mutual communication and our mutual support to international organization and international effort like those launched by WHO. Hopefully that we can provide a better sort of global uh, solution to this uh, problem that are still overhanging uh, in front of us. Well, with these remarks, I take this um, uh, opportunity as one of the milestones uh, to strengthen our relationship. And I look forward to um, receiving Secretary Lopez to our sort of a Belt and Road Summit, which he has kindly agreed to, to uh, take part, even on, on a virtual basis uh, in September. So there will be more sort of collaboration and communication between both of us, especially between our business community. So with this, uh, my congratulations to the very successful event held today and looking forward to seeing you more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Yao. Now may I invite Secretary Lopez, please. Okay, thank you very much. And again, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Yao, for that excellent uh, closing. And, and, and we'd also thank the excellent panelists and uh, Stephen, who shared their views on the many business opportunities between our two economies. I thank our, our partner again, Secretary Yao, for taking the lead and uh, joining us in this dialogue. I agree with you, Secretary Yao. Uh, we have strong relationship. We are like brothers and sisters and the sisters to be just gender sensitive. Many Filipino Chinese uh, trace their roots to China, including Hong Kong. And these ties can only grow stronger, you know, in P2P, culture, even tourism after the pandemic and, and business. Yes, there may be difficulties now in you know, opening borders, uh, especially with the scare of, of this Delta variant. But the, uh, this too will pass. We will overcome the pandemic and it's just a matter of time. Meantime, we then you know business continues through these uh, virtual meetings and and, and other ways. Um, on on the business side, the Philippines recognizes the interest and the eagerness of Hong Kong to be one of the first batches to accede to the RCEP agreement. And uh, I've given our uh, support to Secretary Yao uh, that the Philippines will be the first member state to express its unwavering support to Hong Kong and uh, to the other RCEP members. As mentioned by uh, Mr. Steve Chuang, uh, Philippines and Hong Kong services complement each other. The importance of Hong Kong as a, as a financial and uh, transport hub presents opportunities for companies operating in the Philippines. Hong Kong as a gateway to China also offers unique advantages. And that's why last year, even amidst the pandemic, DTI opened its uh, representative of, of, of PTIC of Philippine Trade and Investment Center office in Hong Kong. This office will facilitate increased business engagements through information and assistance to enterprises. Meanwhile, the make it happen attitude of the citizens of the Philippines and the resilient nature 
of the citizens in Hong Kong does not only display the similarities between our people, it also illustrates how we can complement each other. The continuous cooperation and support between the Philippines and Hong Kong will ensure a robust economic growth in a post-pandemic future for both of us. Furthermore, the regular engagements between Philippines and Hong Kong are very important to, to update our respective stakeholders about the various opportunities that may partake. In addition, representatives of the Philippines will be very happy to go to Hong Kong to hold the inaugural Joint Economic Commission to discuss possible cooperation initiatives as soon as the border restrictions are lifted. And again, I assure Secretary Yao of my participation in the forthcoming Belt and Road Initiative Forum. Again, we thank the participants, the moderator, the panelists who came from both the private and public sector, the co-organizers, the supporting organizers, and Secretary Edward Yao for today's webinar. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary Lopez. Ladies and gentlemen, the webinar has now come to an end. We hope that it has been a fruitful morning for everyone. For those of you who has submitted questions during the Q&A session but not answered, you'll receive uh, the responses separately via email after the webinar. If you require any further information, please feel free to contact the teams of Invest Hong Kong and Invest in, in the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office. Thank you once again to all of our distinguished guests and speakers for your insights, and thank you all the participants for joining us today. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'll see you next time.